Aloha, I am June Jones of the Houston Roughnecks, and this is the XFL Show. Welcome, football fans. This is For the Love of Football, and this is the XFL Show. I'm Alan. And I'm Bryant. And as we wait to find out where talks between the XFL and the CFL are going to lead, the XFL's 2022 season still on pause while rumors continue to swirl about the 2021 CFL season. This is episode 162 where does our mind go after a week to stew on the news from last week? Talking about talking, a bunch of rumors coming up, statements being made, Bright. It's been an interesting week, a lot of speculation, and I feel like most of the speculation leaning in the panic direction has been coming from up north. Uh, up north in Seattle, like you were saying, oh, you were talking about further north, I'm sure. No, uh, this further, is like- yeah, in the other country. The other country that's that's up there. Uh, this is like getting up to the beginning of a season and a couple practices before week one, you injure yourself, you got a red shirt, you had an amazing week going into it, and now where does your mind go? Do you want to keep working? Do you want to keep doing this? Do you want to take a break on your mama's couch? What's going to happen? Well, now I think uh, you and I have uh, – we haven't really talked about this since the week uh, – since we last talked about this. So I think – I'm ready. No, to kind of give you my take. We have hold on. Hold on. I'm a yeah. I want to give my take too, but I need to pick me up. Sorry, real quick. Hold on. Let me just. Oh yes, tell me you did it. Sure. Oh. Um. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Just chew on some coffee grounds, like Coach Joe, real quick. Wait, no, is that espresso? No, not espresso. <laughs> Cuban coffee. <laughs> oh damn. <laughs> I hold on. Add, okay. You, Whoa. Hold tell, on. Hold tell on. everyone what we're doing today. Uh, we are talking CFL XFL. How do do this? <laughs> Alan is uh, going to go uh, rinse out his mouth uh, with some coffee ground, out of uh, coffee grounds. Anyway, uh, it's been an amazing week, football fans. Uh, probably some listeners now from the CFL. Welcome. We're going to talk about everything that has to do with this merger, quote unquote merger, acquisitions. Alan's got in the background. Uh, lots going on, lots happening, and here he is back, Alan. Hey, hey, did you get? Did you? Are you going to wash it down with some Terramana tequila? No. <laughs> mm. Why did you do actual right, coffee grounds? Why, that is horrible. Anyway, to Coach O does it. Why can't I? You're not Plus Coach O. Sh- <laughs> I'm, I strive to be every day. Go Tigers. Go Tigers. Well. I want to be in the right mood for today's show because we've got a lot of emotions going on out there right now, Brian. We've got uh, CFL fans really just thinking crazy thoughts, XFL fans thinking of global domination. We're going to settle things down here on the show, bring it back to reality, (laughs) do a temperature check, and try to just really assess the situation Seven two four five six five four XFL is the number to call. Fans could text and call in, leave their thoughts, and I know some of them their minds go to merger. Others go to stay the hell away from our CFL football. We want to hear from everybody and continue to do so, Bryant. But we're going to be diving into a lot of the reactions that have come about the last week. No, we are, and I think one thing's clear is that one mind thinks this is a good thing, and another mind thinks it's not. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll dive deep into that, but let us know what you think. 724-565-4XFL uh, is the number to call or text. And I believe, I believe the number works in Canada as well. 
It should. Yes. At XFL show on Twitter as well. And we are brought to you by pretty easy podcast. You can go to pretty easy to get your podcast started today. So yeah, Dinkin and Duncan social media. Uh, we asked an interesting question. We're going to get to some of the reactions on that real quick, Brian, but before we do anything, want to say uh, uh, just a, just honor the uh, passing real quick of uh, Rusty Tillman, former New York, New Jersey hitman head coach, uh, passed away this week, uh, was a linebacker in the NFL, uh, longtime coach with the Seahawks, 75 years old, passed away this week, uh, an original XFL head coach in 2001. We definitely want to pay our respects to him. No, definitely, and especially in the XFL community, people know uh, the name Rusty Tillman, uh, the name that infamous, infamously got into a, a heated – I don't know if it was heated, but it was an exchange with uh, Mr. Ventura there. Interesting, uh, yes. <laughs> But uh, regardless, a, a great mind. Uh, and I believe, did the Hitman go to the playoffs? I always forget this. I don't remember if they went to the playoffs. No, that was the Oh, game. man. I, if My Ugh. XFL East Ugh. history Ugh. Oh, oh, is bad. I was so entrenched in extreme uh, propaganda. All I do, I do remember Rusty Tillman, though. Remember watching him on the sidelines and hating the uh, gimmicky parts no. of the 2001 Chicago NFL did. for sure. Oh, yeah. He yes, hated so. those gimmickies. Yeah. He would have been a great coach in, in 2020 if 2020 was in 2001. I, I yeah, I, I mean, yeah, if it was the, that XFL, I think he would have enjoyed it a little bit more. But rest in peace, Rusty Tillman. Uh, the XFL lost a member of of its history this week, so we definitely pay respect to him and his family. And going back to 2001, maybe even here, Brian, with the question you asked on social this week that I was really intrigued by at XFL Show on Twitter, you can hop on some of these fun questions that we ask or poll questions and whatnot. And you said, what random XFL moment lives in your head rent free? Just, and that's a different kind of like, which one do you remember the most? This is one that's maybe you're constantly going back to, or that pops up and you can't get out of your head. Like for me, that, that moment is vivid walk. It was walking on the field in the Meadowlands before their first kickoff and watching the Guardians get all hype to Bone <laughs> Crushers, never scared, was like the most badass, the video coolest thing. That. Yeah. A moment I was like, yes, this is what the XFL is all about for me this year. I'm so excited that the players are just living it right now, so happy to be playing. That was a beautiful moment for me. And that's coming from someone who was there covering the game and, and just trying to enjoy all the access I was getting. And that was like the ultimate access. I was just feet from their pregame huddle getting hype. It was unbelievable. Yeah. I think my, um, my moment uh, is actually in St. Louis when you and I were there. Uh, we, we covered that game from a different, from a lot of different areas. We were in the press box. Spam. And we sat up. You're right. I can't forget the spam sandwich. That was the <laughs> spam other sandwich. XFL moment. Yes, that was a great one. Uh, no, it was actually walking in, I think, into the main concourse uh, and then going into the stadium. I think it was in the third quarter. And it was right when that Battle Hawks chant was going. We were right in the middle of it. I just remember the atmosphere. And uh, what a few got to actually, what a few actually got to enjoy in person, I was lucky enough to get one of those. So that was uh, definitely something that I, uh, I I will treasure and I'll remember forever. Uh, but if you're talking about a public moment, I will say it was the PJ Walker fumble touchdown that was just probably the most insane play <laughs> that lives in my head. That was an insane play. Do you, and and you got some good reactions on that. People were people saying a lot of PJ on those on the reactions at XFL show. Uh, there was a couple. I mean, there was the return, right? That in St. Louis, right? The return in at the return or whatever in the return. Uh, there's a player. Uh, I forget. I, I couldn't tell. I couldn't make out the number. Who ends up uh, throwing up right before a uh, what looks like a play from the T yard line for the Houston Roughnecks. Someone recorded that. Uh, there's there's mm-hmm. some great. Uh, of course, you have Coach Moss. You want it. That that's also one of the. Uh, you want it down. I'm gonna give it to you right now. And I was the. What's so cool about that moment also is I was at that game, but still was able to witness that because I was obsessed with the sideline stuff and had it on my phone as it was happening in the stands during the game. So I didn't miss it. And I, I, of course, it's a great moment. But yeah, living rent free. Maybe now uh, I feel like you could say X, the XFL's living rent free in some CFL fans heads. 
CFL fans, I th- at least from when I would just go on social media and try to, if you just type in on Twitter or something, XFL, CFL, I felt like a lot of the talk was on the Canadian side, worrying about their game, thinking about merger, thinking about changes to their league, whereas XFL fans, Brian, fewer and far between, we're going to get into it, what their exact reaction is, if we're going to generalize maybe a little bit later on, which isn't always the best thing to do, but we're going to just really gauge where we're at with the reaction to that statement that you might, you said last week might have just been some, a marketing ploy for, for all we know. Ha, ha, ha. We got you all talking. Uh, that's true. We, it, there's Like I said, there's there's two sides of this. There's the CFL side, the XFL side, and both of them have completely different views of what they want out of this. Uh, just to take – we did get a text message, and we didn't get a name, but it was 469 area code, which I think is Dallas. Uh, Football-wise, nice. I, really, I really hope the XFL adopts the CFL rules, unlimited backfield motion, and honestly, I think the CFL should consider adopting the XFL's double forward pass rule as well. So one of the few that says, hey, take a couple here and there. But we appreciate that text there. Give us your name next time, though. Send your name. Yes. Yeah, and, of course, remember that number, 724-565-4XFL, if you want to send those texts in. And, of course, you could call and leave a voicemail and be on the show if you want as well. We are uh, planning on, real quick, also, Dinkin' and Duncan, some interviews coming up. Uh, as all this crazy news comes out, everybody's talking about it, writing about it. Uh, we are going to drop on the podcast feed separate from this week's episode. So basically a bonus interview with TSN's uh, Dave Naylor, football insider for TSN, covers the Canadian Football League thoroughly. And we are going to get the scoop from that end. We're going to give a Canadian perspective. We're going to get someone who has a keen sense of the history of that league and what this really might mean for their business model moving forward with the XFL maybe being integrated to the CFL. Maybe he has some insight. We're going to talk to him, and you will not want to miss that. That's going to come at you on the podcast feed, so quick programming note. And then we're also planning on some uh, other interviews with a lot of people who are writing great stuff right now uh, about the CFL, XFL. There's a lot of coverage right now. Collab, about the tons CFL of and the XFL merger, whatever. You, I was telling people while you were going, we were out spitting coffee Merger. grounds, mergers, acquisitions, whatever you want to Don't call it. Don't use that <laughs> word unless you really, really believe that's what's going on. Because some people say, why even say merger? Nobody from either league said merger. That's also another question we have to ask. Like, should we even be talking about merger? Why is your mind go- directly going to merger? Should it be? Probably. I don't know. I think as the week has gone on, I lean more towards merger as a realistic possibility, but it wasn't initially where I went. They said alignment, and that's what I last week I came up with sharing is caring with players and whatnot, but We'll, we'll this get week, to it. The Alan, merger talk really ramped up. I don't think you but, put a. I don't think you put your 2022 season. Uh, you know, you don't put a red shirt on your 2022 season unless you're making <laughs> some big moves here. So, and, and remember, if you got a red shirt a year, it's not the end of the world. You could still end up electrifying the crowd and becoming the biggest thing of all time. So, let's get into it real quick. The big controversy first up this week with this week's cover too. I will be coaching like a crazy man. All right. Some people said this statement was crazy, man. (laughs) The United Football Players Association. We have talked about them before, and of course they are new, and many new listeners might not know about the UFPA, or many many long-time listeners still might not know (laughs) about the UFPA. I think if you're following XFL, CFL coverage, you know about them now. UFPA is a... Not a, it's not a players association like the CFLPA or the NFLPA. They're not a union. They're a trade association, basically a group looking out for the football player. They are there to provide assistance with players who were in the AAF or the XFL with taxes and job hunting, knowing that they aren't going to get to play football anymore. Maybe they're, they're there to be of service to football players, similar to, to a union like the NFLPA or CFLPA, but not an official union. That is why this statement that they made this week was so controversial because they are not, I guess, official like the CFLPA and maybe step out of line or step on some toes at least 
with what they said. But here it goes. Bryant, let's bring up the statement from the UFPA, and I'll read it. We are aware of the announcements that have been put out this past week regarding a partnership between the XFL and CFL, as well as the possibility that the 2022 XFL season may be postponed. Our number one priority is and always will be providing the players with transparency and empowerment of whatever situation with which we are faced. To that end, multiple sources, including former and current league coaches and executives, have indicated to us that there is a strong likelihood that the CFL may cancel the 2021 and 2022 seasons as well. We will be contacting management from both leagues to discuss what we as players should be aware of moving forward. Whoa, that is a big time statement from a a new organization, but one that is getting a lot of attention because there are so many former AAF and XFL players that are using it as a, as a trade association, as a service. Uh, so, it was it, it was recognized by the CFL, Brian, and and when they say your se- their season might not happen, strong likelihood it won't happen. the The league takes no- notice because they're working hard on trying to make that happen. And you have a group out there saying, "Oh no, no, wait, players, their season might not happen." That's controversial, and that is where the big the the big clash this week kind of happened on social media, at least between the the various entities. We're going to get into the CFL and CFL PA reaction, but real quick, that statement by the UFPA, what'd you think about it? Well, I think the statement unfortunately got, it, it was put out by this. What is it? This is the UFPA. It was put out by them, but I don't think it needed to be put out by them. It should have been in an email sent out to the players letting them know what's happening. I think that that's where the, the convolutedness uh, of the It would have been statement. leaked on social media anyway. That's but fine, they but it's an email. Yeah, on Twitter for the yeah. world. Yeah. yeah, see, this is kind of a little, you're making a statement more so than you're just alerting your players, hey, this is what we're hearing. This is what we're saying. That's what you were made for. That's what you it's were meant to do. It's also a good, good way to get their organization some, some attention. That's a controversial thing to say, uh, attention-grabbing thing to say. And so if you're so. a player, your ears perk up. Yeah, so the CFL responded uh, through their CFL communications Twitter account as where I caught this Bryant. Uh, the UFPA has no standing with the CFL. We of course bargain with the CFL PA. The claims being made in its name on our upcoming season are false. We plan to play this year. We intend to play this year and we are working very hard towards playing this year. That includes working towards provincial and federal approvals for our health and safety plan. Facing huge hurdles with that too, by the way, in Canada with getting, you know, with the pandemic and getting everything straight and playing in front of crowds. But the CFL announced, hey, untrue. We're working hard. That we're it's not a strong likelihood we won't play. They're, we're doing everything we can to play. And we're working with the CFLPA, which you are not. You're a players association of a different kind. So get out of here, UFPA. And you'd think an organization like or organization for all of our Canadian wa- viewers and listeners, like the UFPA, like why would a league even recognize them? Well, they must be they must have some clout if they would even respond to that, right? That why would you even recognize it? Well, because they you know that some players are going to respect what the UFPA is telling and th- them, and I think that you hit the nail on the head right there. It's the players that respect. The UFPA that you go after that have been, quote unquote, screwed over by the AAF, the XFL in so many in, in such a way um, that, you know, we're going to get to it here. This Kenneth Farrell YouTube video. But he did say, you know, these players are not making millions of dollars. This is mm-hmm. their livelihoods. They're making a couple thousand. Here Hashtag and there. we want our jobs back. Yeah. <laughs> Hashtag we want our jobs back. Um, but at the end of the day, all it is is just information for these players who don't know. You know, you tell them that an XFL season is coming in 2022, players make decisions based off that. Hey, maybe I can play there. I can make some money. All of a sudden, you put that on hold. Now the CFL 2021 season, you know, who knows what's going to happen with that. Uh, I think the CFL, it's, it's, you know. it's it's That's the biggest thing here is I feel b- I feel bad as a CFL fan. And I'm sure they – and that's why the fans are so up in arms because this week we're all talking about an XFL-CFL thing where – they don't know if they're going to be playing in just over two months. 
their preseason should be kicking off. And the the 2021 still, season still an, a big question mark. And then you have this statement. That's worrisome. Well, and I will say this too, Alan, because uh, you said it right now that the, the CFL is committed. I cannot believe I'm talking so much CFL. The CFL is committed to this playing season. This is not the season. CFL show. <laughs> yes, yeah, not. This is a but, CFL show, sort of. <laughs> The CFL is committed. I, I don't think the CFL is as committed to playing the 2021 season as they are committed to saying they are going to play the 2021 season. Ooh. They are definitely committed to saying they're going to play it. How committed they are to actually playing think, it is a completely different question. Do you think they're committed to making it happen through, I don't know, maybe Redbird Capital and the XFL ownership now? Do you think that's that's what a lot of the talk has been? This is their road to – actually playing this year is making a deal with the xfl ownership group but is the cfl if the cfl is going to lose money why play if there's money on the horizon going forward like it, it's a balance i'm not going to get into all economics of it all into the whole how much are you truly losing even though the cfl lost 65 million or something like that last year like I think that number is a little inflated just based on the fact that you're not playing games. I don't know how you can lose that much money. You're losing that much money in revenue, but how much did you actually lose is another question. Um, like I said, the CFL well, we is have, definitely we, committed yeah. to saying they're going to play. They are. And we have more, we have more reactions to that controversial statement from the UFPA, the CFLPA and their president, Solomon Elamimian, legendary player in the CFL responded saying there is an organization called the United Football Players Association purporting to have knowledge of the CFL, our bargaining and the status of the 2021 and 2022 seasons. They do not. They own the only credible information should come from your player reps or the CFL PA office directly. Now this was sent to CFL players today's by statement email, by the UFPA has created unnecessary distraction as we remain focused on playing a 2021 season. I think this was actually tweeted out as well. Our advice to you when seeking information is to contact the CFL PA office directly or your elected team player representatives. So again, reaction, strong reaction to the UFPA saying false, erroneous, erroneous on all counts. Pay no attention to those those people at the UFPA, this organization we know nothing about here at the CFLPA. We're trying to get you paid and playing in the next couple well, of months. Don't don't worry what they're telling you. Hey, CFLPA, I appreciate what you're doing for your CFL players, but I believe the UFPA is also for players who are not tied to a league and are looking for work. And that's where they're actually trying to talk to uh, not players who have already signed contracts or, or anything like that, that are stuck. They are probably trying to reach out to them to get me, get me wrong, but this is for players who need to get taxes, need to get things done. They need to get a job after playing football for half seasons, the last two years. Like that's the things that we're trying to worry about here. Yep. So Kenneth Farrow founder of the UFPA and former Seattle dragons running back, I uh, believe he played in the AAF too, correct, Bryant? He I was believe he did. In that league as well. Uh, Same, so so he dropped a YouTube video after the statement got so much reaction, such strong reaction. And in it, we're, I, I was thinking about playing this thing, and it's. I definitely encourage people to go check it out, but we, we, didn't, we weren't going to play it. I just want to, so we can move on with the show and get to some of the other stuff we want to talk about. But Kenneth Farrow in the reaction video that he posted, or the explanation video, basically said all we're doing is looking out for like what brian said the players who were screwed over in the aaf the players who were screwed over when the xfl went bankrupt and that's all they're and and they have their sources and their contacts and the knowledge that they believe is true and they're just going to inform the players that they're looking out for what they know and that's all they're doing on their end so basically it's not a union like the CFLPA, but it is a trade association and a union of sorts that is is was created by players to look out for players. So if I am one of those guys not in the CFL, hoping to maybe go there, a preseason camp or something, or just someone wanting to know about the XFL coming up, you you that's your source is the UFPA. That's just another group looking out for you. So I don't feel like anybody's saying anything wrong here. UFPA is not stepping out of out of bounds for them to the CFL and the CFLPA. Yeah, that's 
this is our business, shut your mouths. But hey, there are other people involved here. That's why the UFPA had had to speak out with the big news from last week. So that's where you understand it. But again, something you have to take with a grain of salt because what information could the UFPA have that's better and, and then the, and the people at the CFL or CFLPA in terms of what they're actually going to do this season with their league. That's another thing to consider. Like the sources, the UFPA have, how reliable are they compared to the league and the players association being on the same page there, Bryant? That's one thing I look at often. Those two entities aren't on the same page, but when it comes to what you said, saying we're committed to playing this year, they both are doing that. Committed to committing to say that they're going to play is, is I think uh, the, the, maybe the theme of this episode when it comes to the CFL and the CFLPA, but the UFPA, like I said, they're, they're there for the players and then not necessarily there for the players that are under the CFLPA. And great article by Andrew Buckholtz from awful announcing to uh, people should check out where he said also talking about this, this uh, statement by the UFPA, you know, basically, Check it out, but take it with a grain of salt because who knows what they know, what reliable sources could they have? And he, I th- he kind of said lean towards, you know, the CFL and CFL PA being more trustworthy here. But, and I agree, obviously they have the history and whatnot, but the word merger was used by Kenneth Farrow in his video, Bryant, the word merger was used a whole lot on by people who cover the CFL a whole lot for TSN and the CBC and people who are covering the XFL down here in the States. RSN the merger was brought up How do you say merger so in French? much, so much this week by everybody covering this thing from guys like Mike Mitchell to Dave Naylor, who we're going to be talking to tomorrow. So or today that makes me think, well, maybe the UFPA did, did get something that they believed enough to, warn the players that they're looking out for. So I don't know. <laughs> the word merger is the controversial term here. CFL does not want that word thrown out just yet. And no one at the XFL is look, saying the XFL about look at, at all. The XFL postponed their plans for 2022. And you expect us CFL to not question whether or not you're going to play in 2021. Like, come on, it, 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 it's bound to happen. That's why they're so committed to saying that they are committed to playing a season this year. But it's the writing's on the wall. Like, it's not far-fetched to say the CFL might not play this year. It's not far-fetched for coaches within your league, if these sources are correct, saying, hey, we don't think we're going to play this year. It's not that <laughs> out there, you know? Like, Jim Zorn Where was the only mind? one who said, I'm getting ready to coach week six. Like, that's not going to happen. <laughs> Right, you were the right. You know, seven out of the oh eight coaches do, but this is not going to happen. Well, so, if coaches within your league are saying this, it's not far fetched. Yeah. It's not something that's like way it's, out there. The XFL already postponed their plans for their season. You're 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 it's, first, it's, and the XFL postponed their plans. <laughs> it's all about where individuals. We're talking a lot about like where individuals' heads are going and what they're talking about, but also the collective conscience is also something maybe to consider here. The collective conscience is really leaning towards that merger talk, and like you said, if the writing's on the wall and if all the kind of ducks are in a row and that makes the most sense and that's why everyone's saying that word so much maybe the cfl you know can't play coy for so long and to react to the ufpa so strongly is just a really interesting thing where they could have totally let that go and internally like you said maybe the cfl pa did something internally notifying their players about stuff that's up but the, the thing that probably definitely irked them is the 2021 season not being played stuff. And that's, that's well, just they went big, as far as to say 2022 as well. Mark. 2022 yeah, is that's, a little, that's way out there. Um, yeah. That, and the, the, the XF last week, it was the XFL not playing in 2022 that was being floated out there with the pause. And, you know, now the, these talks and where do they go? And if there's no 2022 XFL season, huge bummer but that makes a lot of sense the cfl not playing for three years would be kind of unimaginable 
I mean, the XFL didn't play for 19, and they did pretty well the first year back, <laughs> other than a pandemic. So it's not all far fetched. But it's yeah. not. There's they, they, they were there's so quick hope. to deep. Yes, can, there's hope. You can redshirt one year, two years, three years, as long as you get on the field eventually. Yeah, you never know. You might end up at a <laughs> you might end up at a club and, and jumping in line still. Go uh, ahead, get out of here. I'm not a fan of if this is some way to discredit the UFPA. I think I think that needs to be debunked. Not debunked, but that needs to be squashed. Because the UFPA is just trying to provide something for players who don't have uh, any type of protection with CBAs or anything like Access that. Access so. to information and, and whatnot. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's the thing. The CFL is very defensive about people saying 2021 might not happen. Well, they, it's put up or shut up within the next month at least because this thing's supposed to be happening soon. And now we'll part two of the cover to gauge the reactions now of what people were, were doing this week on social media, Brian, which was a lot of fun. Would you say it is an overgeneralization to say that most XFL fans, the most common reaction from XFL fans, at least online, has been, what's the CFL? <laughs> I think diehard XFL that- fans know what the CFL is. And I think that's, there are people out there who are like, what is the CFL? What, what's the XFL even maybe sometimes? Um, I will say the overwhelming reaction on the XFL is like, we got news. Ooh, yes. No matter what that's it is, we, we wanted about. something. Yeah. Right. And so I think that's, that's why the where positive the comes argument, from the XFL. The argument comes in that, you know, the CFL is coming from a way stronger position because their league has structure history, and teams yeah. and people and history and the XFL is just looking for any kind of morsel of publicity and way to push forward to playing football and that makes a whole lot of sense but what's with what's going on right now the CFL is having to do actual damage control their fans are either outraged curious confused and flabbergasted whereas xfl fandom who weren't following the cfl at all are like brian said oh we got news i'm so excited something's happening yeah so that's the xfl it's way if if you're an xfl fan with no stake in the cfl prior to the news it's all it's all chill it's all good (laughs) but not not the case for cfl fans (laughs) who are concerned for their game and I saw a lot of talk where the old, I guess, older Canadian fans are the ones who are going to be really defensive and scared that like three down football would go away and it would become four down football and rules would change and whatnot. Um, and I saw a whole bunch of people putting out polls this week, Brian. Uh, John Hodge of three down nation.com, I saw put out one who said if the league were absorbed by the XFL. That's a name. That's a new one, too. To- Absorb. Absorption. Merger, acquisition, absorb. absorption. <laughs> he said if they played four down football beyond 2021, would you continue being a fan? So that's directed towards Canadian fans, obviously. And pretty close here. You had 30% say absolutely, about 20 say maybe, 32 say so Canadian, nope. And 16 say unsure. So pretty close there. But the majority, very slim majority, said no. Stop watching, and that was. I mean, that's a good a good sample size of over almost twenty over twenty two hundred voters on on that poll from a. a was that a BC a game? Well known, a well known writer uh, covering the CFL. So that was interesting. But uh, I'm, I'm assuming it's a lot of the older fans that are probably saying nope there. Well, I think it's just people in general. When you when you do polls on Twitter and there's a positive and a negative, the negative tends to win uh, more often than not True. Uh, on Twitter. So uh, there's that being said. Also, you know, 2,200 people. I mean, it, it's just a good sample size, but we are talking about a league that – two leagues really that have – you know, people are protective. They don't want change. People are afraid of change. You know, and, and we fear change. It. Yeah. Well, then I saw another one in reaction to uh, one of the other polls on CFL Reddit <laughs> uh, user outsider zero underscore zero asked people if if they would become more interested, less interested or wouldn't change interest only if they're under 30 years of age. If this league went from three downs to four downs. 
And the majority in that smaller po- sample size, still enough here, nearly a thousand. Majority, 300, or, yeah, 319 said they'd become more interested. Of, and that's the younger crowd they're appealing to. So when that's also an XFL. Ordinance. Well, that's the XF. Was that the Reddit on CFL? That's a CFL Reddit post. It was cross posted to the XFL's Reddit page. Um, so c- CFL fans voting on that under 30 c- a years old or years of age. Uh, and <laughs> our, our guest coming up on, on, on our special bonus interview on the feed, Dave Naylor of TSN uh, put out a poll, Bryant, and uh, said, again, only under the age of 30, what on his feed, he said, what would, you, what would your th- thoughts be of a merger three to four downs? And that that poll got l- mostly less interested. So it's also who's posting it, where they're posting it. And I got to imagine Canadian fans are not going to abandon. Like, say your team's still playing football. You'll get over that there's going to be one more down, won't you? It's going to be something we have to ask. One more chance. One more chance. Yeah. Um, like, uh, say, okay, it is a merger or – an absorption, but the BC Lions are still playing, and a fan of that team or a fan of the Argos is watching them play four down football. They're not going to stop watching them. Like if the Steelers started playing three down football, I'd still watch and support the Steelers, right? I don't <laughs> think do do fans think that way. I don't know. I think the rules of the game. <laughs> I, I, I can't. I, I don't know. I, don't, I just can't really speak to what fans feel when it comes to enjoying their game. Like I, it's not like the XFL came around. I was like, I'm going to stop watching NFL because I like the XFL game more. Exactly. Right? Do you not watch NFL because you like the Canadian game more. Like where, you know, would you? Why wouldn't you want more NFL type football? You know, if you enjoy the NFL, do you do you not watch the NFL? And do you watch the CFL? I guess maybe those fans. Would have a problem with four down football if you don't like four down football for whatever reason, <laughs> but if it's football, and then I saw other ones that were like, "Oh, our high school games are never gonna. It's gonna change everything. <laughs> They're gonna stop playing three down football everywhere." No one said that at all. No one even ever said the word merger or absorbed until this week in the media, and more people are starting to cover yeah, well. and talk to people within the league. And now that word is being said so much. So is it? Where does your mind go after one week of yeah. all this and more people covering it, more people doing some digging? And now we assess it here on this show. This is going to be a fun hot read coming up, Brian, because I have no idea what you're going to say here. And I kind of penned for you what I got coming up for you. Just to, I wanted to give you a heads up. You, I, you gave me no heads up, so I don't <laughs> know what to expect here. You might say something show. more controversial than the UFPA. You know what else does? <laughs> Eating con- coffee grounds. I can't believe you have coffee grounds. Why do you have coffee grounds? Well, I grind my own beans. I don't know about you. I like my coffee. I buy my own made. beans at Starbucks. <laughs> All right, let's do it. It's time for this week's Hot Read. Where does your mind go? Where's your mind go with a week to stew on this, Bryant? You start. Me? Oh, I was going to at least get to hear what you had to say. Um, I, I wrote for you what I about what I will kind of get to. I, I want to start. I've been waiting all day for this. <laughs> all right. Where does my mind go after a week? I will say that I am leaning more towards a... I'm going to try to not say it. I lean more towards a, um, I I have to say it, a merger with two leagues. I I think it's just kind of where, I definitely don't think these leagues just started talking last Wednesday. Like, I think this is something that Randy Ambrosi and Danny Garcia and company were all talking about. And then they're like, this is going to leak. We need to make a statement before it leaks. And they got in front of it. Good for them. Makes sense. Something, ex- something the XFL has been good at since the league really started. Um, back up. Uh, I can't imagine the XFL postponing, or at least I can't. Well, you know what? Here's the thing: is people are saying postpone 
the 2022 season. They haven't said that. They have just postponed their plans for the 2022 season or continue planning for the 2022 season, whatever that may be. Um, it just seems like there's something there that the and I will say this: I think the XFL wants something out of this more so than the CFL does. The XFL saw an opportunity to expand what they had, and that's why they're doing this. I don't think the CF the XFL would want anything to do with the CFL if it didn't feel like it could benefit mightily from it. Well, look look where we're at too. Again, so just assessing one week later, no further statements really from either league, except the CFL's reaction to the UFPA statement. They're committed to committing uh, to say we're playing. And their, their top priority is playing in 2021. We know that with the CFL. And the XFL has been the subject of, sport, of talk in Canada all week. The XFL is actually being discussed in some places other than this show and in the nooks and corners of XFL's uh, social media uh, that it has been as of late since the bankruptcy. So the in the majority of the talk, has been around that word merger and f a lot of people saying follow the money a lot of people saying follow who benefits man just look at who benefits man well who benefits well you look at redbird capital has been buying up all kinds of sports properties the cfl would be one bright brought up maybe they just buy the whole league or or give some sort of financial aid this year so the cfl can actually play in 2021 that like makes OCP, sense that'd be great <laughs> yeah <laughs> they'll write a check for this year so that they can't cash that they can't yeah. pay back be like, all right we're just gonna take control so reading all the stuff that came out this week all the opinions all the great reporting all the people saying they've talked to people high up and this is where they're thinking it's going but no one officially really claiming anything just yet where my mind goes, Brian, is selling. They're selling something. We don't know what. And I know that Dwayne The Rock Johnson's involved in this. And when Dwayne The Rock Johnson's selling something, he does not oversell and underdeliver. He delivers what he sells. And he's selling right now something that's going to be good for players. Something that his rhetoric has been all about respecting the Canadian Football League. And, and hearkening back to his days in the league, his short-lived CFL stint. So I am not a p panicky CFL fan, and I don't have the history behind me in, in terms of m m my enjoyment of the league. I'm not c Canadian, so it's not ingrained in me, but I do like the league. I, I'm a, a fan of it, but I'm not worried for it because I don't think what – the rhetoric we've heard so far is I feel like it's it's going to be honest. There might be big changes coming, but I think overall you're going to enjoy it, even if you're an old timer, an old timer. And then if, as far as the XFL fans, you can't be anything but intrigued and excited. I, I mean, already one year since the bankruptcy now where we're at right now in March, Bryant, uh, way better place financially. There's hope. There's intrigue. So I'm all good on that end. And then my mind goes to expecting changes to the CFL. And I, I, I'm expecting a larger XFL than what we got in 2020. However this thing turns out, I think it's going to just make the XFL bigger, more recognizable, and with better players uh, better access uh, to a global market now. So all good on that. I, I really feel like the forbidden door is about to be kicked open. They're telling us it's coming, but it hasn't quite been kicked open. It will be kicked open. That's where my mind's at now. Now, Alan, if the two leagues were to say, hey, we're good, we're going to handle our business separately, thank you for the conversation, Whose path is brighter? I would say that if it just stalls and they say, "All right, thanks for thanks for coming," thanks uh, here's for a Tim Hortons. Talking. Yeah, here's a Tim Hortons and and some and some donuts. And here's some Terramana. And uh, we'll 
see you down the road. I would say that the the XFL is in a better position, but from what we're hearing this week, everything's on pause. You know that also, we haven't mentioned it. That means stuff like hiring people in coaches. the offices is on yeah. pause and coaches and the what, what happened to the chief football officer position. Yeah. Right Not, nothing on that front. So that yeah, I mean that would make sense, but if it's on pause and that that you know slide him into the role or rename the role. So maybe the bummer is the XFL because of these talks has to push back and reassess and and maybe 2022 doesn't happen. But that's still, I think, a better outlet considering who's behind the XFL. Redbird Capital, Dwayne Johnson, Danny Garcia, versus being a league that has way less financial st- stability, didn't had to skip a season, and is two months away from having to start a season and no one knowing if it's actually going to happen. I would say structurally the CFL's in a better spot, but financially... It's got to be the XFL. So it's really pick your poison, and I'm an XFL fan first. I'd have to say so. I'm I'm liking the XFL hand right here if that should happen where they both walk away from the table. But judging by all the talk that this thing has probably been stewing for a while, I don't think that's going to happen. Yeah, I don't think that's going to happen either. Um it's so funny where other people's minds went because Alan, you and I talked about this, but we didn't really. I mean, we we said, what do we think is going to happen? What do we want to have happen? I don't think what I said last week about what I want to have happen is the truth now. I, I think that's changed after sitting here for a week. I want the XFL to, to come in and do their thing. Redbird Capital, sign that check. Do what you got to do. Let's get these teams all together. Let's get a whole map. That's one league. Put them all together. Figure it out. Exactly. Uh, I would do east and west, by the way, not north and south. I'm just putting that out there. Dave Naylor also had a great uh, video, I think, out on TSM basically saying, hey, CFL fans, a couple of the stadiums that the XFL were using don't fit a CFL field. So, you know, there's that too. <laughs> yeah. uh, Dallas. <laughs> Dallas, uh, I think it was St. Louis. Uh, oh, the best thing I saw, and I and I and I adore any CFL fan that's trying uh, to defend their league. I do. I appreciate because if it was me in your shoes and I was like we're flipped and I felt like I had to defend the XFL, I'd be out there defending them. Um, they're not getting rid of St. Louis. They're not getting rid of Houston. Like people were talking about, let's just bring up the four teams that are closest to the border. No, nobody else. I don't think that's gonna. Like, people are dying to play in like St. Louis is a. Not going anywhere. Probably the only team that actually probably made money for the XFL last year. Um, the rules. Here's the thing. Now, I will say this, Alan. We've been talking about this for a long time now since the since the Rock bought the league. And Danny Garcia and, and Redbird Capital. Is the rules are set. You, you're good. Now, if the CFL comes in, do you have to kind of weigh the options? I mean, we've talked to Sam Schwartz many times. And we talked about how the Rouge works for them. The five-yard halo works for them because of their rules. Do you have to like do this all over again where you're trying to merge these two leagues' rules together? What What do you think? It just so much has to go into that. The 2022 becomes a huge question mark for both leagues if these two, team, these two leagues come together. Yeah, and then also if we are sinking our teeth into that word merger and – you're instantly talking about teams like St. Louis and you're having teams in Amer- in America, Houston, your Tampa Bay, wherever. Or you uh, having that means teams the majority and and you, and say you keep your teams in Canada, it still means the majority of the money coming into this league and and the marketing is going to have to be in the United States. So it's going to be a US-based league, which means You need to cater to those fans, which means a lot of those CFL rules are going to have to go. And that's the unfortunate thing that I think CFL fans are grappling with all week, and I totally get it. And if it is true that they're in such financial dire straits, is it something they're going to be willing to sacrifice? Because this is not like the original U.S. expansion. 
I don't know. I don't think this is expansion. This is this is a different word. Is it absorption? It might be expansion or is it merger? Is it is it uh, invasion? I as some might see it that way, but it's different from that. And something something's changing here for the CFLs where my mind's going ultimately. But, Alan, but like, I, I think I, at the end of it, it's going to be good. Is that where your mind goes, merger? Is that where your mind goes? I mean, not a hundred percent yet on that. I just it mostly goes to change and and it, to, for the CFL and something way bigger than I could have thought of for the XFL initially than just coming back to what it was in 2020. It's it's but, way more interesting on that end, and then yeah, unfortunate in some regards for the CFL, but also exciting for them too. But you got to look at it a certain way, and it's very hard to let go of what they've got going on. This is a league that's been around for nearly three quarters of a century. So, Alan, let me ask you this because you're more CFL than I am. Can I say that? I guess that's the thing, right? You're more CFL than I am, Alan. Um, yeah. Is Randy Ambrosi basically in the same role as Roger Goodell, where his main focus is making money for his owners? He's got to, yeah, in the league. He's got to make money for the league, make money for the owners, get this league to be as big as possible. And that's why they come up with things like trying to expand internationally and having camps with other countries and getting an ESPN Plus deal. That's, yeah, he's a commissioner. So if that's the case, this, I mean, I said it last week jokingly, I'm almost feeling like it's happening where Redbird Capital might just be like, hey, Here's 25 million per team. Give I mean three, you know, six owners, three communities own these teams. And then Redbird Capital does what they want with them. I mean, this it's, it's all possibilities. The CFL, a lot of teams could be like, hey, look, I'm done. I understand that this is the CFL, but owners could be like, look, I've lost money. I can't keep doing this. I'm gonna fold the team if I don't make something soon. Like that's kind of the other feeling too that I get is that some some of these owners being like, Randy, go make us some money. So I can get out of this with some positives. If you, so you're if saying, you, hold on, let me say this. Hold on. If you bought, your mind's GameStop, going to sacrifice right here. Yeah. If you bought GameStop at 400, sometimes you just got to get out at 250. You just got to do it because it's no longer going to get there. Maybe that's where these owners are. Randy, I bought this. We're at here. Get us to here so I can get out of here with something in my pocket. So you're saying a sacrifice. You're saying you got to kill it to save it. I mean, yeah, it's like it's like a what it's like a control out delete when the blue screen starts coming up. You all remember that? You just gotta kill your computer and, and reboot it. When, it's a when, lot of when it's, when it's dying. It, you, it, you've been on Windows Seven forever. You loved it. It was your favorite operating system ever. It's time to go to ten. Get with the program. Get with the times. Maybe, or maybe you just get up from the table and say hey, thanks for talking. Good luck in with what you're going to do. We're going to no. hear, try to survive on our own. Yeah, and no one is saying, and I don't think anyone sees it. We talk about writing on the wall. No one is saying or seeing the XFL going away. No one sees that. No one sees no. the XFL being we, the money. We have like seen the, some people say the XFL's got to push things back. They've said that. The XFL's got to evolve into something different. But no one said this, this thing, the XFL is going away not with redbird capital involved not with how danny garcia and the rock have already promoted the league as a big deal for them personally in their careers and their legacies so you're right that's not happening that's why there's way more panic on that cfl side and the rock though they have a better position yeah the rock and danny garcia and redbird capital didn't buy the league for 15 million to sell it for 20 I'll tell you that much too right now to make a couple million bucks. That's not what they did. <laughs> and right now, let's be honest, the XFL is not worth much. You have a few employees. You have a couple things here. What's the CFL going to do by buying the XFL? You didn't buy anything. You bought team names. You bought, you know, you didn't even buy leases. So. No, that's, that's what's, it's crazy. It's the CFL has the structure. The XFL has the muscle behind it financially, and marketing wise so that's why that word merger might make the most sense at the end of it but we're just waiting for 
for that news, the official news. Until then, we could say that word, but if you're at the UFPA, I guess watch out because the CFL doesn't want to hear it, especially if you're saying 2021 might not happen for them, which I hope it is not true. I, I and we're not saying that CFL that's... football this year. Look, we are not. You know, we are. We have no. You know, ties to any uh, CFLPA or anything like that. But I will say that I think it's very likely that 2021 does not get played uh, by the CFL. And if CFLPA and CFL, you guys want to talk about that, go right ahead. You can tweet at us at XFL Show. Put us out there as much as you want. I'd love to have our name out. In See, that's a controversial statement. I mean, after we talk to Dave Naylor, I'll have a better idea of if the CFL is going to play. But I'm leaning towards where my mind's going is dun, the, the, the Redbird Capital, the XFL, saved the day for 2021. The CFL lives to – they fight this year, and the XFL lives to fight another day alongside the CFL maybe in the future. That might make a lot of sense too. That might make a lot of sense too, but is Redbird Capital going to invest in a league – that has nothing to do. It just, it just doesn't make sense. I mean, I get it. I get it. Redbird Capital in saves 2021. But what do they gain by doing that in the XFL? These are the, this is probably at least some of what's being talked about at the table between the two leagues. Do we actually know? No, only what's being reported on that you're hearing. We're reporting back, covering it all, laying it all out there, and dissecting it each, all one by one as much as we possibly can right here on This is the XFL Show, because that's what we do. We keep you informed, w- reading all week long. That's why I've read so much, so many different opinions on this, and they are really all over the place. But the really respected people are even kind of throwing around that word merger. So it's, I think, okay to say, at least on this show, which we've, by my count, said at least 25 to 35 times. Probably uh, that many. You know what? Just how the UFPA is there for the players... Here at the XFL Show, we are here for the fans. So catch us here every single Friday right here on your favorite podcast app. That's Google Podcasts, Spotify, uh, Stitcher, TuneIn, wherever you get your podcasts. Make sure to give us that five-star review. Uh, if you got a question, comment, or concern, or something you want us to cover here, uh, text or call the XFL fan line 724-565-4XFL. Standard text messaging rates do apply, and probably international rates, too. you got to say that now, too. Uh, also, follow us. Stop doing that. Follow us on all social media gimmicks at xfl show uh you know twitter instagram wherever you get your wherever you like to explore your social media uh also if you want to come and say hi hello uh subscribe and watch us on youtube at youtube.com slash this is the xfl show the official youtube page of the xfl and uh don't forget to check out our sponsors pretty easy podcast go to breezypodcast.com get started today because they make podcasting uh pretty easy this is sanka Ugh. Senka. I don't eat you Senka. Dead, you dead men? No, man. All right. <laughs> that does it for this week's show. And uh, kind wow. of. It's don't forget. Kind of. We have Dave Naylor this yeah. week. Or today. Yeah, Dave today. Naylor coming up on the podcast feed uh, shortly, probably after this episode drops. So check that out or oat, however you do it. Uh, we appreciate our new viewers from Canada. And, of course, you could check it out on our YouTube channel. So it's all going all over the place. We're covering it, all the news that's coming out, all the respected opinions we will we will refer to, uh, all the insiders we'll refer to. That's why we reached out to Dave Naylor. And uh, we're going to assess the situation, talk about it with you, and have a whole lot of fun. Either way, it, it's Bryant's favorite. He loves this until they actually kick the football off and play the games which is what I'm hoping for, for the CFL come May. But we're just going to have to wait and see. But not too long. I mean, he really was on the edge all week long. I It was the first week, Bryant, where I checked my phone multiple times throughout the day for, for news updates and, not, and without just waiting for them to ring or do my daily check. Like, a lot more checking that phone for something coming out. Yeah, that's I'm always a good sign. What the, what the reactions is are, what the uh, interactions are on Twitter, uh, it, it's, it's it's an exciting time if you're an XFL fan. It's a interesting time, I will say, if you're a CFL a CFL fan. But you know what? If you're a football fan, you gotta love it because it's probably gonna mean uh, more football for you. Yeah, and then not to mention the NFL getting their 
ten billion dollars to give you way more football all over Amazon and all the streaming networks. So with the CFL and XFL getting into that game, oh man, we're gonna we're so close to football year round. It will happen one day in our lifetime. And this is maybe that road. All right. We got it. We got to end this one. I got to get some sleep before we talk to Dave Naylor. Thanks to everybody for watching and listening. For Bryant, I'm Alan. This is the XFL show. Remember, they're listening.